Nearly 20% of children don't have access to education. Half the global illiterate population live in South Asia, two-thirds of them women. Global CO2 emissions reach a record high in 2021 as the world economy rebounds strongly from the COVID-19 crisis. Fridays for Future protests draw thousands of young people calling for climate justice. At the moment when we read the IPCC reports, the latest ones, we really can get very depressed because we need progress and we need it really fast. There are so many interlinkages between digital transformation and sustainability transformation. And the EU already speaks about this twin transformation. So you cannot really see these two things as separate. And if you want to design one thing, you always have to have the other in mind. So some very easy connections are, if I want to be more sustainable, I have to understand how I'm doing, my status quo. For that, I have to collect data. Collecting data means digitalization. Digitalization is just putting anything to bits and bytes. Digitalization is about changing the world because digitalization provides the opportunities that we can offer digital products and services or digitize entire business processes. Digital transformation is more complex. It's totally a paradigm shift. I think that digitalization can help us to achieve sustainability benefits in all different SDG areas. Digitalization is really the underlying factor that helps us to achieve the SDGs if we use it in the right way. SDGs are sustainable development goals adopted by the United Nations as a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet and ensure peace and prosperity for all people by 2030. There are 17 SDGs in the areas of environmental, social and economic sustainability that are all interconnected. If you think about SDGs like climate action, biodiversity, no poverty, health, education, but also these more meta-level SDGs like partnerships for sustainable development are enabled through digital technologies. In all of these areas, startups are coming up that are building digital technology to benefit these issues. I have an eco-consultancy. We're working on a software right now to automate the process of putting together a carbon footprint. The best thing to do is to take a look where is our highest emission hotspots and to go right into there. My college's name is National Girls Central College. Here we are giving them education without books. That is digital education. So we are giving them so many apps that they can learn everything. It is free of cost and at any point of time you can go to the lab and you can learn. But while digitalization can help us solve sustainability issues, it comes at a cost. If I become more digital, I purchase IT. Uh, this, of course, has a footprint. Unfortunately, the production of IT hardware is associated with a lot of environmental and social consequences or problems. These range from a high energy consumption or the mining of raw materials such as gold or palladium. Of course, we also have a high water consumption and even water pollution through the production and mining process. Or another problem would be the emission of greenhouse gases or other toxic substances. So what role does sustainability play in the digitalization strategy at the University of Mannheim? Sustainability is very important for the University IT department. We are considering various aspects of sustainability when purchasing IT appliances to make sure that the IT equipment on campus fulfills all requirements for eco-labels such as the Blue Angel. The whole topic of green IT is quite complex because you cannot just think about purchasing IT. You really have to think about the whole life cycle, right? Purchasing IT, using it, maybe refurbishing and reusing it, and then in the end, the right type of recycling. What's actually concerning is that only around 20% of the global e-waste is actually documented, collected and then recycled. There are around 80% that is not traded under clear circumstances and transported to other countries, often in the global third and as a big amount of e-waste, which is also growing every year. So how can universities help solve these issues and use digitalization for good? We actually try to engage more in research and digital innovations. So we just 
created the Data Science Center where we try to bundle competences of different disciplines. As the Chair of Artificial Intelligence, we are investigating um, methods from artificial intelligence and machine learning for applications in industry. With digitalization, there's this kind of thinking, how can we make accessible the things which are done here for others? Materials, ideas, products, they are open to the public and they can continue working with it. In the Core Transform, we are a group of lecturers from different universities. We want to, to go public with this course, to offer it as an open uh, source course so that other students, other lecturers can profit from it as well. One of the most important uh, endeavors that we are currently undergoing is NKGU, which is a European University Alliance uh, with currently seven partners, including Mannheim. And uh, we are trying to set up courses which are either taught by uh, two professors from two different institutions, but also um, open them up for, for students from all the seven institutions. Digital technologies enable us to, to broaden our offers for our students. The class from Engage EU, it's one of the best classes I've ever had. It's the most engaging, although we never saw each other in person. We can give students a experience abroad without having to send them physically abroad. The other thing is we can reach students through digital technologies which we haven't been able to reach in the past because they have not been able for several reasons to go on campus and study here. And, and so uh, to me it has also an inclusion dimension. I think online teaching will make it possible for more parents to go to university. When my child gets sick, I oftentimes contact the lecturer to ask if I can join the class online, which usually works really well. So what is the best way to use digitalization in education? I guess that the biggest challenge to me and to many is, is kind of hybrid teaching. Um, so we have parts of the students in a classroom here in Mannheim and part of the students is digitally somewhere else. Um, because it's really hard to, to decide, do you focus on those who are here or do you focus on those who are in digital space? I think these hybrid settings are just taking a lot of cognitive load from the teacher to coordinate all these different audiences and make sure the recording is fine afterwards. I do miss seeing the faces of the audience, right? I mean, usually students turn off the cameras. This missing feedback over time is, is always less fun, surely, for both sides. But I think using hybrid models surely can make sense, in particular for guest lecturers. And also it is comfortable for many students who not necessarily live on campus. I started university with the pandemic. It was kind of on purpose because I worked between my degrees and I live in Munich. For me, it was a chance to go Fully digital. Having to be in presence, having to go to the lecture every day, I think it's important to socialize and if there's a material online that is substitution for all the stuff, then all the, the campus life is gonna suffer from this. The hybrid model is actually for me the best way because um, I can have the benefits of both systems. I can watch the lectures live um, and be on campus, see my friends, have also the social aspect and really enjoy studying and being on campus. But also if I don't have the time, I don't have to, have to stress about it, I can just revise the lecture online later on. I am a big advocate of hybrid teaching um, because I think it gives the most freedom to everyone, right? So it is very inclusive. People who cannot join in class can also join via Zoom. On the other hand, it's also a challenge, right? Because we have to change our teaching style. We have to upgrade the technology in the lecture hall. So I think in the meantime, we have to really experiment a lot. Which format is the right for which class and which groups of students like which formats? I work at the Projekt Inoma and so I check empirically if the digitalization was good for learning. And they do very different kinds of teaching. So classical inverted classroom with videos, but we also have some, for example, virtual reality and others. Sometimes lecturers say, mm, if we digitize everything, we are not needed anymore. And that's definitely not the case, but the dynamic changes. And oftentimes it is for the good. Digitalization, digital technologies um, are instrumental. They, sh they should improve our capabilities to teach, to learn, to do research. We probably will not be our online only university. At the same time, we can't go back to 2019 saying, so everything is going to happen mostly here on, on campus. Where we will end up in the middle between those two poles, nobody actually knows. The goal is to preserve the university as a place of encounter, 
while enabling learning, teaching and research in a way that is as flexible as possible, fully online, hybrid or in presence, while always considering social needs as well as environmental sustainability to fulfill these to the best of our ability.